I used to go to ju junior congregation. This particular year, uh, Saul Wax was teaching the uh, special Nusach, the, the melodies for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which are quite special for uh, uh, the high holidays. And he was teaching him to this guy because he was a boy and he was going to lead the services. Somehow or another, I was listening in. I don't know exactly how that happened. Maybe he let me. I mean, he obviously let me. It's not like I was standing at a keyhole or something like that. But anyway, uh, he was supposed to be leading the services for the high holidays. And one of those days, that particular year, he got sick. And so I ended up having to do it, even though I was a girl. So. There was always something that I was aware of that even though I was equally competent in terms of our Hebrew knowledge, uh, in terms of our singing ability, he was the one who was getting trained to do this and I could listen in if I wanted to. Um, when I was in college, I remember uh, sitting, I don't know, the first or second Rosh Hashanah with Paula Hyman who was also in college with me at the same time. We were both very active in Hillel. Uh, and she also had a very extensive Jewish and Hebrew education, even more extensive than mine. She had gone to and, and was continuing to go through college to Boston Hebrew College. Um, and we were sitting there for services. Uh, and whoever it was was leading the services, a, a boy, guy, uh, and we were, you know, sort of saying to each other, we could do, you know, a lot better than this. But it didn't occur to us that we should even ask because, of course, men were supposed to be the leaders of, you know, the services. And um, I remember that at a certain point, uh, Ben Sion Gold, who was the Hillel rabbi at Harvard, tried to get both Paula and me to lead services. And we were both really hesitant, reticent. You know, we thought this is not right. This isn't what's supposed to be. You know, if we, we, we sort of each bought that whole thing that if, you know, if women start leading services, men will stop coming and it'll be like the Catholic Church. And, you know, I don't know, whatever all this stuff people were saying, you know, if you destroy sex roles in Judaism, Judaism as we know it will collapse, you know, the sort of fall of Western civilization theme. And we bought into that until, you know, I guess maybe by our junior year he had worked on us enough that we finally conceded and we started leading services too. And now Paula became, you know, has also become, you know, a major Jewish feminist. You know, she's done tons of writing on Jewish feminist things. But, you know, we both had this initial reaction that you know, we're not really supposed to be doing this. But then I, you know, when the secular feminist movement began, uh, I think it was just like, I, I, I don't know, it was a, one of those pulling the, the uh, film from your eyes or something like that, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, this is stupid. You know, why, why would we have thought, I mean, it's hard for me to connect with that person, you know, who believed that, that deeply. Um, but, but then all of a sudden, it, you know, you, you're reading feminist critiques of this kind of sex role stuff and you realize it's garbage. And so obviously Judaism has to change too. And so, you know, we started working on changing Judaism, you know, it's just, it's almost like an overnight, you know, once, once your eyes are open, it's hard to see it any other way.